Hello, this is Hal Diggs from the James City County Police Department. I'm with the Community Services Unit and we're here today to do a security assessment of a home. That's one of the services that we offer to our county members. Uh, give us a call, we'll come out and do a home security survey. There's three things that we're going to look at when doing a home security assessment. Uh, three different lenses. One of them is safety and security from outside intruders. Uh, making sure you got the right doors, locks, bolts, exterior lighting, things of that nature. Another lens that we're looking at is from safety and liability aspect. Make sure it's safe for anybody visiting your house, you know, so they don't get hurt and injured and so forth. The third lens is from loss prevention as far as fire, flood, things of those nature. Make sure you have everything in order so if that does occur to you, you'll be ready for the insurance companies. So if you're ready, let's get started. We'll do the home security assessment. Trees and shrubs are one of the things that we'll look at. And for example, shrubs, they recommend that you keep them two to three feet high, but definitely no higher than any of the windows. You want to have natural surveillance looking out of the house and into the house, uh, so you don't want any shrubs higher than any windows. We'd also recommend that you keep shrubs back away from your house, a foot to two feet. Again, you don't want to be able to hide back behind here, so I would recommend to this homeowner to trim these bushes away from the house some. Exterior lighting is one of the most important factors we look at as far as crime prevention is concerned. We like to make sure that there's plenty of exterior lighting around the house. Uh, it's a big deterrent for anybody, that, any would-be thieves. So on this side of the house, we have two nice lights that uh, hopefully the homeowner would keep on at night. They might want to add motion-sensored spotlights to the top of the house if they so chose. Um, they have a porch light here. The entrance of the house has got a light underneath that. That'd be always good to keep on. So exterior lighting seems to be adequate in the front of the house with those two big lights. Uh, again, we also recommend motion sensor lights, especially in parts of the house where people might not approach if they had ill intentions. Here we are in the back of the house. I see a light over here. There's a spotlight up there that looks like it has a motion sensor to it. So again, we have good lighting in the back of the house, which is nice. Um, bushes and shrubs, they all look very well. Notice over here, we got a pool, which is surrounded by a fence, which is good. And again, if you're gonna have a pool, I recommend that you call code compliance with the county and make sure that you're doing whatever you need to do to be compliant with putting that fence around the pool. We check to make sure outbuildings are locked and secure, which this is, that's a good thing might want to have an exterior light on your outbuildings. And please, any cars that you park outside, make sure they're locked and all valuables are out, out of the car. You don't want somebody to be able to look in and see a GPS or a purse or anything of value in the vehicle. And then, of course, if it's unlocked, they will just simply reach in and take it. So please keep your car locked and all valuables out of sight. Now, exterior doors we'll look at. First of all, we want to know that they're solid core doors. They're not hollow. We want to make sure there's a good extra bolt lock system in it, which this has. Uh, and if you have windows or glass around your door, we look at the exterior lock too to make sure because you don't want somebody to be able to just break the window, reach in, unlock it, and be able to get into the house. So one of the things you can do about that is also have a key lock deadbolt on the inside of the house. Now that might pose a safety risk if you have young children because there's not always a key available so they needed to get out. So that's one of the concerns. It's something that the homeowner's gonna to need to weigh themselves. So we'll go inside now and look at the interior of the house. Windows and doors are important, especially ground level windows that people could get into from the outside. You wanna make sure they're always secured with at least one lock, uh, which this has a nice locking mechanism here. Some windows have two. If they have two, keep them both locked, please. Uh, another thing you could do if you wanted to, some windows, and I would check with a manufacturer or a carpenter or something first, if you don't have any locks, you could actually drill a hole, not in through the glass, but through the frame, and put a pin in there, uh, which would act as another lock. Uh, so this is good here, good locking mechanism on these windows. Make sure they stay locked, especially on the ground level, though. Another thing that we'll make sure that you have is a list of all your valuables, valuables things like this. Uh, make sure you have the serial number. We recommend you have a video catalog of every room in the house uh, so you can see what's in it and then maybe have an itemized sheet with serial numbers on the things that have serial numbers so that in case of a loss, fire, flood, whatever, 
Uh, you have all that information in a safe place. By the way, don't keep that here in the house unless you have a fire safe, water safe, safe. Keep it a safety deposit box or something. So you always have that information. And then you can present it to the insurance company. That way you make sure you're getting everything covered. There are no sliding glass doors in this house, but if you have sliding glass doors, we recommend that you have what's called a Charlie bar, which is it's a bar that's installed on the sliding glass door to prevent it from sliding open. And it's usually placed in about the middle of the bar, which also acts as a visual deterrent to a thief. Now, if you don't want that in the middle of your window, your sliding glass door, then the next best option would be to put a piece of wood in the bottom of the frame so they could not open the door that way. So either one is fine. Uh, again, the Charlie bar is recommended because it's also a visual deterrent. If a thief were to come up and see that, oh man, he's got a Charlie bar, he's probably not even going to attempt to get in that way. Another thing that we'll look for in the house is smoke detectors. Working smoke detectors save lives. There's no question about that. We recommend that you change the batteries in all of them at least once a year. And if you hear one beep because of a low battery, when you change that one, go ahead and change all the runs in the rest of the house. That way you're making sure. If you have any questions about home fire escape, please call the fire education office at 564-4793. They'll be glad to give you some information on how to make your home safe from fire. It's also important that the family has a fire escape plan, something that everybody knows. They need a central meeting location away from the house, like maybe out by the mailbox or a, a permanent fixture like a tree or something so that everybody knows where to go in case of a fire. Also, in houses, especially where there's one, only one egress route, like one set of stairs going down, you need some way to get out of an upstairs uh, house. For example, this fire escape ladder. These ladders are important. Uh, if the stairwell's on fire, you can't get out from the upstairs. You would need to be able to put this in a window and then get out of the window downstairs. Now. Make sure when you buy a fire escape ladder that you have one that's approved by a recommended laboratory. Another thing we'd like for you to do when leaving your house for a vacation or something, have several timers that you can hook up to lamps in your house so the house always looks lived in. You don't want it to ever look vacant. Make sure you have somebody stopping your mail and your newspaper. Make sure if you leave the day you take your garbage can out, you have a neighbor bring it back in. You want the house to look lived in is the main thing. So those are just a few of the items that we look at in the home security survey. If you'd like to have one of our officers come out to your house and provide you with a home security survey, please give us a call at 253-1800 and ask for a member of the community services unit. We'll be glad to come out to your house and do a security survey for you.